Hi, I'm Amrita and I'm a software engineer on the Microsoft Graph Toolkit team. And I'm super excited to talk to you about our latest addition to the toolkit in V2.1, which is our Electron provider. Now, before I get into what that is, in case you're not aware of the toolkit, I thought I'd give you a brief intro. So the Microsoft Graph Toolkit is a collection of UI components and authentication providers that make using the graph really, really easy and help you create these data-rich and user-centric experiences with very few lines of code in your application. So there are two parts to that, UI components and authentication providers. So when you talk about the, the UI components, these are fully functional right out of the box, and they use data from the graph and they help you uh, render it really beautifully um, with just basically two to three lines of code. And the best place to kind of explore all the components we have is here at mgt.dev. An example of one of our UI components is the people picker. And uh, this is basically like a multi-select multi dropdown, which allows you to pick people from your organization or people you work with. So I can even like start typing in like the first few letters of the name, and it's going to allow me to pick multiple people. As you can see, this actually is pulling data from the graph to render this for you. Similarly, you have a component like MGT agenda. So all you have to do is include this HTML tag uh, and of course import our library and authenticate to get all of this beautifully rendered agenda data. And they're super customizable with your own. You can add your own CSS, make them match the look and feel of your application. So that's that's where UI components are concerned. And there, oh, sorry, there are a lot more components here on the left that you can go and look at and play with. Um, so as you can imagine, all of these components use the use the graph in a different way. They call different graph APIs. So we have to first be authenticated with Microsoft Identity to be able to get these access tokens for the graph. And that's where our authentication providers come in. So we have different authentication providers for the different platforms that you may want to build on that help abstract away all of that code that you would need to get access tokens, not only for these UI components to work, but also it gives you a graph endpoint to call any graph API of your choice. And so, like I said, we have different providers for different platforms. So if you were building a web application, you would be using our MSL provider. If you were building a SharePoint web part, you'd be using our SharePoint provider. Similarly, if you're using it, if you're building a Teams tab, you'd be using our Teams provider. And last but not least, if you're building an Electron app, you can use our Electron provider. And there's a very simple example of how you would use an MSL provider here for our web app for a web application. So all you need to do is uh, import the provider from our package and then say providers.global provider, initialize the MSL provider with a client ID of your app app, app registration. And that's basically it. That's uh, all you need to do get to get authenticated. And then you can start using our UI components or even call the graph. So with that intro, let's jump to our Electron app. So here I've um, basically have a very simple Electron app here. And for those of you who don't know what Electron is or have never worked with it before, Electron is a framework to build native applications that are cross-platform because they're based on very fundamental web technologies like HTML and JavaScript with a Node.js backend and a Chromium frontend. And uh, so, yeah, so they're cross-platform and they allow you to build and it allows you to build native uh, app experiences. And a lot of actually a lot of the most common apps that we use on Windows, like Microsoft Teams, and even VS Code that you're looking at right now are Electron applications. And Electron has two kinds of processes, main and renderer, right? And you can think of main as the back end and renderer as the front end. So the main process is responsible for the application lifecycle, for all native interactions, and also for creating renderer processes. The renderer is the UI. So every page that you would have in your Electron application would be associated with a renderer process. And the main process kind of controls the generation and uh, deletion of these renderer processes. Um, so this is just a very basic TypeScript Electron quick start kind of uh, template project that I cloned from GitHub. 
Um, all I've done right now is I downloaded, I npm installed these three packages. So the first one is MGT components, which contains all the UI uh, MGT components that we're going to be using. Um, this is the electron provider itself. It's in its own package. And then MGT element is the base package that allows these components and providers to interact with each other. And what we're going to be building today is a very simple uh, to-do application. So we can go over here. So now we're going to try to get authenticated uh, first using the provider. So in the main process, we're going to be initializing this class called Electron Authenticator, which is what's responsible for getting all of the access tokens. And then we're going to be like initializing something called Electron Provider in the renderer.ts file, which is just responsible for receiving all the access tokens from Electron Authenticator. So let's complete the first step. I'm going to import these, the Electron Authenticator in my main.ts file. So what I've done here is I've created a config object of all the, the details that you would need to pass to initialize Electron Authenticator, like your app registration, um, the window on which you want to get authenticated, which is this browser window instance, and all the scopes that you would need to call all the APIs or to render all the UI components. And last but not least, initialize the authenticator. And we're done with this part. So there's only one step left, which is in the renderer process, like I said, we initialize something called electron provider. So just import these libraries. And, and so I just initialized the provider, and that's basically all you have to do. I'm also going to disable cache for this demo. And show you the, the calls actually being made. And finally, we can add the components that we're going to be using. So I added MGT login, which is our login component, um, MGT person, which shows person details of the person logged in, um, and MGT to do basically displays all your to do information from Microsoft to do. So we'll wait till this runs. Again, I'm, I think it's taking more time than usual because I'm sharing my screen. So just to recap, we initialize the Electron Authenticator in the main process. And we initialized Electron Provider, and then we added some MGD components. So in the meantime, um, for folks that are following the staff, Jeremy just put out a quick survey out there, and we're just interested in knowing how many devs are actually doing uh, are actually doing dev and Electron Alt right now. So if you can just do a thumbs up on uh, Jeremy's post, we're just survey, just a quick survey to try to understand like where you guys are actually um, acting now with that. You are Anruda. Yeah, thank you. So finally opened. So I'm going to sign in. So the login component basically has two states. When you're signing in, when nobody signed in, it's going to say sign in and allow you to sign in. Um, going to get the password. And then once you're logged in, the login component will display your name and your picture. And yeah, so all of this data just rendered right away. And uh, that's pretty much how easy it is to get started with the Electron provider. And so as you can see, this is the login component. And then you have the person component that has a picture and also your status, your name. And you can always customize the amount of data you want to display here. And then all of your uh, to-do tasks straight from Microsoft to-do. Now, this is a very basic version of the app I built, but I also did, I built the same app here. It's actually pretty much the same code, except I added a hidden feature that I'm really excited to show you. So I'm going to go to, I'm logged in as Megan, right? And this is her team's uh, app. So right now, Megan is available and she's just working at a normal pace she has this beautiful desktop wallpaper of Mount Rainier. 
Okay. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I have trouble focusing during the pandemic and like I get really annoyed when I'm trying to get something done, but people are pinging me. So I like to go to like do not disturb mode. Um, once I do that, my app actually turns to dark theme. And I did this solely for the purpose of showing off that MGT supports dark theme. And all you have to do to enable that is to add a class to all your MGT components or in your document, uh, in your body dot element. But also my wallpaper changed to this giraffe that's telling you to, that it's watching me and I need to get back to work. Similarly, when, when I'm done with work, I like to appear away. And I also have this bad habit of lingering on on my laptop when I'm done with work, but really I should be working out. So I have my wallpaper reminding me that I need to go work out with this cute little kitten. So how I'm doing that is in this application, it's basically the same, the same code. So as you can see, this is the renderer process and we initialize the electron provider here. What I did was I, I NPM installed a package called wallpaper that allows me to do all the wallpaper changing magic. And what I'm basically doing is pulling presence data from the graph every five seconds. And this is how I'm doing it. So you can subscribe to the on state changed event on the pro provider that will fire every time there's a login or a logout. So I'm checking here if a person is signed in and then I'm calling this function or check presence, that's going to pull data every five seconds from the graph for the presence data. So this is how I'm calling the graph. So I don't know if you remember that I said that all our providers give you expose a graph endpoint that allows you to call any graph API. So here I'm using that graph endpoint to call the presence API, and I'm also uh, checking based on what the response I receive, I'm checking what the, the status is. And based on that, I'm changing the wallpaper using the wallpaper NPM package. Um, and one more thing I'm doing is I'm also able to manually set the presence over here because in our person component, we use a different polling frequency to poll for presence. But since I am pulling presence every five seconds, I want to manually update that every time I find, every time I get the presence data. So I just pull the MGT person DOM element and then I uh, manually add the presence object. So that brings me to the end of my demo. Hopefully I've shown you how easy it is to uh, start off with the toolkit on Electron. So I can take awesome. questions now. Thank you. Thanks, Amruta. I'm, I'm just going to bring back the, the slide deck, but uh, great work. I love it when we're having fun uh, doing demos. Uh, Thank you. I uh, definitely need that present status background switcher on top of my presence life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have it, this app on all the time, and sometimes it really works. <laughs> Here are just some resources for if you want to get started with the toolkit or learn more. Um, these are all great places to start. Again, I appreciate your time. Great work from the MGT team. Um, always exciting to see what folks have to present. So I appreciate your time, Elise and uh, Amrutika.